following show is controversial and contains content you may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. 98 FM Dublin Talks. Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Yes, indeed, we're here again. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. Not quite as cold as it was, but uh, still a bit fresh. This is Adrian Kennedy, and between now and midday today, this is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. What have we got coming up on the show today? I want to talk to you in a couple of minutes. If you have ever been the victim of a house break-in, a startling amount of you have been, but what I want to really talk about is the effect that it had on you. If you've ever been the victim of a house break-in, what sort of effect did it have on you psychologically? Because it is... I know it happened to me, touch wood, only once, but it's a horrible feeling. It's a horrible feeling walking into your bedroom and seeing that they've pulled out the drawers and you just don't want to be there anymore. If you're somebody who's been uh, affected by a house break-in, I would love to talk to you on 67979891. Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. Also want to talk to you about uh, something we've never discussed on the programme before. Uh, lip filler injections. And how young women just can't get enough of lip filler injections. We hear from a Dublin man whose girlfriend is addicted to them, or so he says. We'll talk about that later on. And it's Friday. We want to hear your good news stories. And much more between now and midday today. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. And uh, my good news this Friday um, is that uh, tomorrow the Six Nations kicks off. Actually, this evening the Six Nations uh, kicks off. 98 FM's uh, Darren Cleary is here with me. Darren, um, I, I love the Six Nations. I think everybody, well, not everybody, but an awful lot of people do. It's a super tournament. And what makes it such a good tournament is you never know who's going to win it. Yeah, and everything is very much cup final intensity. I think that brings a different dynamic to it in that particularly with the emergence of Scotland as genuine contenders to shock people like they did against Ireland two years ago at Murrayfield. Anyone can beat anyone except Italy who probably aren't going to win a game this year but it is hugely competitive. It's ridiculously hard to to win five games in the spring and it's going to be even harder in a World Cup year because I think people will try to manage their resources in a way that will make for more intriguing encounters. Okay, now the first match this evening uh, involves France and... Wales. Wales. France and Wales tonight. So you want to bluff for a sentence, Adrian. If you know nothing about rugby but you want to impress someone down the pub or yeah, yeah, in yeah, the well. supermarket, you tell them you just... You never know which French team will turn up. They're so unpredictable. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay. That's, that's the bluffers guide to the Six that. Nations. <laughs> Write it down. France. Okay, so France and Wales tonight. Um, that will be fairly evenly matched, will it? I think it will. The, the French have a, a relatively settled lineup of one or two new faces. Um, Wales, they travel well, though. They have a decent run on the road. It's a very, very tough destination to go to. As we saw last year, Adrian, don't forget our Grand Slam started with a last-minute drop goal. We call it Le Drop. Johnny Sexton got us out of jail. Um, The French are good. They're much better than their inconsistency suggests. They have an ability to beat any team in Europe on their day. It's just depending whether or not it will be their day. Scotland-Italy then, first match tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, and the Scots, I've been talking to a couple of Scots, and they have this mad confidence for a team that... They always have a bearing on who wins the Six Nations in that they will take points off teams and maybe end some other teams' hope. But they've never actually put themselves in a position to win it. They genuinely feel that they have a chance of taking the title this year. And and Scots can be mad at the best of times in their, their ambitious and the fact that they really believe they are world beaters. But there's a genuine air of, of a swagger about them. They're almost reminding me of English people in that they walk around thinking that they can do anything. And then tomorrow afternoon, the game that took place on St. Patrick's Day last year, it was the last match of uh, the tournament. Uh, it was England versus Ireland. This year, it's Ireland versus England. I've already seen white shirts walking around our city. That's the big one. It is huge. It's massive. And you don't really need any kind of extra motivation to beat England. In any sporting sense, it's a special rivalry because you always dislike your neighbours the most. Look at Liverpool, Everton, Manchester City, Manchester United. It's always those close rivalries that matter the most. But England this week have gone out of their way to be a pain in the arse. It has been a bit childish. They're going to bore us to death. And They they didn't say death. They said they will bore you, bore the shit out of you, which is (laughs) much worse. Actually, that's what they did say. And Johnny Sexton has a line as a like a bat phone 
phone to the ref. Again, crazy <laughs> stuff. Even Joe Schmidt met Eddie Jones last week. So they all do photo shoots and the two coaches have their hands on the cup. And Joe... Joe doesn't know what to make of Eddie Jones because Joe is quite reserved. He's private, he's quiet, he's quite a respectful man in his dealings with the media, in his dealings with the players. Eddie Jones is the opposite. He is a mouth. Complete opposite, yeah, Complete yeah. Complete mouth. OK, I'm going to put you on the spot. Are we going to do it tomorrow? Are we going to kick off the tournament with a win? I would fancy your chances. I just think England are a side that have a point to prove because last year, Adrian, they finished fifth out of six teams That's in right. the Six Nations. Mm. They had a, an awful year last year. They really improved in November within a point of beating the All Blacks. They're a much more improved side. I do feel the gamble might be no Rob Kearney. He's put Henshaw at fullback. I think that would be seen as a risk to people outside because Henshaw's only played one Ireland international fullback. It was his debut. Um, as a toss-up, my, my head says maybe England. My heart says Ireland. It's too hard to call. Makes for a great match. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, tomorrow afternoon in the Aviva Stadium, uh, Ireland versus England. First na- uh, match for us in this year's Six Nations. Darren Cleary, thanks very much indeed. And uh, enjoy the match. If you're if you're one of the lucky ones going to the match tomorrow, good luck. I'm right. not, but I no. saw tickets today in the office and I thought, how much are they? And way too much for my <laughs> taste. All right. Anyway, if you are one of the lucky ones going to the match tomorrow, enjoy it. But uh, it's going to be a brilliant match regardless. Now, I have a question for you. Have you ever been a victim of a house break-in? And if so, how did it affect you psychologically? Is it possible to feel safe living in a house that was burgled, knowing in the back of your mind the whole time this could happen again? It happened once, it could happen again. Well, one in four adults in Ireland have previously been the victim of a house break-in. Dublin had the highest number of break-ins, well, obviously with the highest population, but with 40% of Dublin residents reported reporting that they've been broken into at least once in the past. Now, I can put myself into that category, and I know an awful lot of other people are in that category. 40% of home burglaries in Ireland happen in the evening, when you're quite likely to be at home. Only 40%, I was surprised by this, if you have a house alarm, only 40% of people set their alarm at night, which means 60% of you don't. And 79% of break-ins occur through the front door, the back door, and the back window. The, ima- the average amount stolen from a break-in in Ireland is €600, Euro, and 46% of Irish households don't have any form of uh, an alarm. Now, I was a little bit disturbed to read earlier on that, unfortunately, two ho- houses in Sandy Hill Gardens in Ballymun were broken into last night. They removed the glass in the window downstairs, which is something we've seen regularly. Please be vigilant. One of the neighbours was elderly. We need to look out for each other. That was a post uh, posted by Independent Councillor Nolene Riley, and she joins me on the line. Nolene, welcome to 98FM. Hi, how are you? Are you I hate to hear of the house of an elderly person being broken into. Absolutely, it's um, it's it's just very very disturbing, as you said, that that this has happened, and you know I I don't know if they were deliberately targeted. I I'd hope not, and um, but it wouldn't be the first time that we have seen this happen, and it's just I suppose you you know if you don't feel safe in your own home, you know the quality of life that you have, like it, it's just you know you're always on edge, like so. I can only imagine this morning what what those people are feeling. Yeah, I can only imagine. It's, it, it's an awful feeling. And in fact, we're going to be having a conversation in a second on the effect that it has on people. But there were two break-ins in the one uh, area in Sandy Hill Gardens last night. Do you know if they got away with much? Um, or, and and were, were the break-ins very similar? And they were very similar. One of the houses was ransacked completely. So um, I, I, I don't know how much they got away with. I, I know they've done a lot of damage. And the, the modus apparatus, I suppose, that they've used is something that in the last few months we have seen quite a bit of in the Ballymun and Finglas area. And I had kind of raised this with the Gardaí before Christmas because it wasn't necessarily something that I had come across a lot. But it seems to be, I suppose, popping up now more regularly in the last few months. And I thought Christmas is always a really bad period for house burglaries because some people think it's okay to go and rob other people rather than actually go out and work and, and, and buy their own presents. Like, but I thought it might kind of quieten down after Christmas. Like, 
and I just it's really it's kind of scary to, to see this last night like I'm one of your statistics as well actually a number of months ago someone at four o'clock in the morning tried to break into my home so it's it's terrible and it does make people feel unsafe and um, and it is just, it, it is just a horrible feeling going into your house and discovering that like like happened in Ballymun last night that the house is ransacked it's just a it, it only happened to me once thank God but that feeling is just leaves you empty doesn't it oh and any noise that you hear or anything you think is there somebody there and that's and that's what people that break into other people's homes have people feeling now and particularly old people they're more vulnerable than any of the rest of us a lot of them are living on their own and they don't have family support living with them so they are they are really more vulnerable so it's important i suppose that people do keep an eye out for our senior citizens because I suppose, you know, they, they do they do need that a bit extra assistance. And we have had other senior citizens' homes before Christmas that were targeted in um, the Ballymun and Singlet area. And, and in one case, a man was, um, an elderly man was assaulted. Like, so some of these people have absolutely no morals whatsoever. Like, um, they don't care who they target. One of the things that I, I do worry about is something that we would have had maybe 20 years ago and it was a thing and doesn't seem to be a thing anymore is Neighbourhood Watch where we all looked out for each other it just doesn't seem to happen as much anymore No and it really doesn't like and like we have safety forms in the areas and they're quite well well attended like but I find like I had a meeting with a guardian number of residents last week around um, a particular issue like and the Gardaí were kind of saying, well, look, you are ringing Nolene, you aren't ringing the station. And there's a lot of, I think, you know, there's, a, there's an onus on all of us to ensure that whether we believe the Gardaí are doing a good enough job or whether they're resourced enough, but that we're giving them the information. It's really important that we see anything suspicious, that we're straight on to the Gardaí and, and, and saying, look, this is happening. And then afterwards, we can hold them to account, like... But in terms because of I, I, yeah, because I do see a situation. I, I know, for example, where we live, and we're not far from where you are. Um, we were involved in a, a community text scheme, but sure, it was a complete waste of time. You were getting texts about something that happened two days ago, so it was I, completely pointless. Yeah, I was actually. I was just about to bring that up, actually. And uh, like in this day of kind of modern technology, I was. I don't think they got much buy-in either. Um, like it's just. I suppose because a lot some of the people that are like it's grand social media is really good like but I suppose not everybody's honest and maybe some of the people that are being targeted particularly our, our senior citizens aren't on social media yes of course so, yeah. um, so it is important that we do watch out for each other our own family members um, I like you would like to think that you know, of all people, that senior citizens would be I know, and I, I, I really find it disgusting to hear yeah, of an elderly person. Well, look, uh, Nolene, send our regards to that particular person. Thank um, you. And I've, I just, I suppose we've actually, something really positive that came out this morning, one of um, the local businessmen, Stephen Simpson, is replacing the windows free of charge. So there is great community spirit fantastic. out there. That's like, great it's to great well to done, see Stephen. that, you know. Thank you. All right, bye, Nolene, bye, bye, Thanks very much indeed. Um, I want to hear from you on 67979891. Text or WhatsApp 0877989898. Simon sent me a message and he says, I don't know if you were watching Crime Call the other night, Adrian, but an old man was in bed sleeping and two intruders broke into his house and tried to tie him up and they locked him in his bathroom and wrecked the house. I was feeling sorry for him going through uh, that poor man. Um, that's from uh, Simon. Um, Adele, who commented on our Facebook page can you give us a call please on 67979981 we want to hear the story about your mother it's Adele um, anyway I want to find out the effect that it has on you uh, like I said my place was broken into oh, probably about 10 years ago and they did wreck the gaff they got shag all they uh, got like a jar uh, that I had coins in and that was really pretty much it but they wrecked the place um, and it's a horrible feeling it really is a horrible, horrible feeling. Donna, you're on 98FM. How are you, Donna? Hey, I'm good, thanks. Donna, your house was broken into while you were all in bed. Yeah, the kids were actually quite young at the time. I think my daughter was about seven and my son was about three. And we were all in bed. I woke up the next morning and went to go downstairs and the front door was wide open. And I nearly had a heart attack when I went. As I was going down the steps, I realised that the car was gone out of the driveway. And lucky enough, they didn't attempt to come upstairs. They just took whatever they could from downstairs. Like, they took, like, makeup bags and valuable was taken out of the house. 
But it was just the fact that they had come into the house while we were all sleeping. It was and uh, uh, like I said, um, it is a, it's a horrible, horrible feeling. It really is disgusting. You feel violated and it's not even the first time that it happened. It happened years ago when myself and my sister were only teenagers. My mum had got all our Christmas presents in and about a week or two before Christmas, the house was robbed. They took everything right down to selection boxes, our Christmas clothes, Christmas presents. They wrecked the place. Every room of the house was just ransacked. I have to say, I've always thought that house break-ins are just the lowest of the low. I really have. That that you invade somebody's own personal space. And to people who broke into those houses in Ballymun last night, would you like it if it happened to your granny? Or your your mother? That's disgusting. They had absolutely no morals. They're obviously dragged because what kind of person could do that to somebody else? And I know like people are saying, I remember when our house was robbed and they took the Christmas presents and Christmas clothes and everything. And I remember somebody saying they're obviously like they haven't got money. Well, get a job. Like. Yeah, and that's exactly well, what Nolan Riley yeah. said a second ago. Get out and get a bloody job like yeah, the rest of and us. Buy your stuff, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't buy stuff for other people to, to have. Exactly. But like yeah. I said, it's just such an invasion of some... You um, know, if you're walking along the street and somebody nabs a mobile phone out of your hand, right, fair enough, OK, you, yeah. you, you got caught, you got done. But when they break into your own private space, it's uh, just, it's vile, it really is. Unbelievable. We couldn't sleep or anything for weeks. It was creepy to think that somebody was in the house while we were all sleeping. All right, thanks for your story, Donna. Um, six seven nine seven ninety eight one. Uh, Maggie, you're on ninety eight FM. How are you, Maggie? Hi, I'm not fat. Maggie, your house was broken into last year. Yeah, while I while I was in it, yeah. Oh, while uh, you were was, while you were in it as well. Yeah, I was the only. Yeah, I was the only one in it, and uh, it. Uh, my partner and my daughter had just left, and I was in bed with a with a cold, and then I heard the front door opening, and uh, I thought, oh, they're back. They're just back really early. And then I heard like really heavy footsteps, like uh, work boots coming across the, going through the hallway. And so I just ran into my aunt's suite and I hid, and I hid in there. Oh really? You had to hide? Well, yeah, because I, well, I was terrified. I thought, I thought for sure they were going to come in and like I was a girl alone in my, in my apartment that mm. like, if they didn't find anything that they'd want, would they come after me kind of thing? So um, I ran in, I slammed my, I slammed my door of my aunt's suite um, to try and kind of scare them off. And when I was in there, I text my partner and told him that there was someone in the apartment. And then I rang my sister, and I video, I video chat her. And I, uh, the idea was to turn the camera around if they broke, if they managed to get in, and she would screen grab his face. My and God, that, that must have been cast. terrifying. It was, I, I was crying my eyes out, thinking I'm going to, I'm going to die. But I may as well get a photo of him so they'll know who it was. Jeez, you, you were really thinking on your feet there. <laughs> well, yeah, because like. I definitely felt I like I thought it was targeted because oh, the lights had gone out, the lights had been turned off, and they had left. And so then suddenly someone was coming in. So I thought there someone must have been watching the the house and known that it was empty. And so now they're coming in, and you know, and they maybe they didn't see I was leaving with them. Maybe they knew I was still in the house. So. Mm. So you're thinking they're coming in to to and kill it, you? <laughs> it does leave a horrible feeling uh, oh, God, behind, yeah. doesn't it? Like every noise would be like someone's coming back in, and you know you're you put double locks on the doors, you stop sleeping properly because you're afraid that like it happened once while you were sleeping. Of course, it could happen again, like mm. that. And you'd only hope that if someone was coming in, they'd just find something in the sitting room or something like that and take that and not come near the the bedrooms. Then, oh, I, I, like I said, it's uh, and are you still living in the same place? I am, yeah, but I have a lot more, lot more locks on the door and uh, a few things to kind of let me know if someone's coming in. Have, so you, got like, a, have, you, got, have you got an alarm? No, we don't have an alarm. We we live in apartments, so we can't have alarms. Oh, but, right, um, okay. We have our own alarm set up throughout the the house that if someone was to open a door, it would make the there was something would fall or you know like a an iron board against a door and that kind of stuff okay so it so it has made you more aware and more preventative to ensure that it doesn't oh, yeah. have a happen again. i always talk because i live in the apartment buildings that like no one could get into my windows that kind of stuff but really they can just come through the front door all right maggie thanks very much indeed after the break i'm going to talk to ashling ashling your house was broken into last august it was, yeah. All right, I want to find out what happened straight after the break. And I'd love to hear from you on 6797981. We're talking about the effect that a house break-in has on people. And just the 
horrible feeling it leaves behind. It's bad enough to lose stuff, to lose jewellery or to lose money. But it's just that horrible feeling that somebody was in your gaff. We'll take more calls in just a second. Don't go away. 98 FM Dublin Talks with Des Kelly Interiors. New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala. 98 FM. And uh, this is Adrian Kennedy with you until uh, midday today. Uh, we were mentioning earlier on, we were talking with a local councillor from Ballymun uh, about two homes in the Sandy Hill Gardens area of Ballymun that were broken into. One of the homes, um, an elderly woman, and in fact, Adele. That was your mam's house. Yeah. Tell me what happened. So, um, my daughter got a phone call last night and it was one of our friends to tell her that one of the windows in my mum's bedroom was gone. So, we assumed it was smashed in. So, me and my daughter just ran straight away expecting to find all broken glass all over the ground and all. But the actual pane of glass was taken out and put neatly on the ground. Oh, wait, so they then, used suction things or whatever to get the window, to I pull the window out? They used. Yeah, they took it down as neatly as they could. There was no, like, forceful breaking, like where someone else you think would just smash the window to try and get in. Mm. They took the whole pane of glass away and put neatly down on all the stones out in the garden. And what sort of a window was it? Is it an old-fashioned window with putty or no, is it a modern window? No, a modern window, like, where. Like, uh, she's only in our house, like, 10 years, so it's, like, one of the modern windows. It's not, like, one of the old-fashioned ones. And was it, is it a double-glazed window? Yeah. And they got they got the glass pane out intact? Um, and put neatly on the ground perfectly. OK, so in they go, and what? So, so I'm hammering the front door down, banging my mask to get up, knowing she would have been asleep at this time, because it's, like, after 10 o'clock, she's definitely going to be asleep. I, I didn't think as quick to bring me key. So I'm banging down the door. So she's screaming, who is it, who is it? So I'm like, ma, it's me out the door. And I said, ma, do you realise like that you are broken into? And she goes, no, I heard rustling around earlier. I thought it was just one of you trying to get in. And I goes, no, what happened? And she goes, I heard, I, I, I left it then. And then I woke up a few minutes later and I seen someone with a white t- T-shirt on to the front door. So what they done was they got in the window they ruffled around the bedroom. They must have heard me, ma. They came out of the bedroom and then ran for the front door. Because my ma's in an apartment on the lower ground. Oh, right, OK. So, so and did, they go, sorry, did they go into her bedroom? No, thankfully, thank God. That's the only thing I cared about. Is if, if she had to disturb them, they would have hurt her to get away. But thankfully, they ran first and my ma just caught them just running out the front door. She said he had a white T-shirt on and he just went... And he, uh, was he alone? She doesn't know. That's what we're trying to ask her. Was he alone? Was someone... She goes, I don't know. All I seen was a person running with a white T-shirt. Now, I'm thinking, right, it's a bit of cold out there. So, like, you wouldn't just have a T-shirt on with their car outside waiting. Like, we just don't know anything. So I rang the police straight away. And then the police said, oh, yeah, we'll send someone up in the car now in a few minutes. 40 minutes later, and my man's sitting at the edge of the bed, shaking. I'm giving her painkillers, water. So then I actually get the number of the Ballymun Garda station and I'm like, listen, my mother's 76 years of age. She's rattling here. Like, she's sick. She's only had to have a uh, breast cancer to hold your bang. Like, she needs someone up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nine uh, calls in front of you. And I goes, I know, but do you understand? My mother is 76 years of age. She needs help straight away. Yeah, yeah. And still to this hour, not one policeman has knocked at that door. Oh, sorry. Today? Even today? Even today, not So hang on, this was, ten, this was 10 o'clock last night. Yeah. You were talking directly to Ballymun Garda Station and they yeah. still haven't shown up? Not one car or one policeman has came near my mother's door. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, if... And uh, that's any, why uh, well, uh, up publicly on Facebook. Well, that's what so I was about to say. I, uh, if any of yeah. the guards from Ballymun Garda Station are listening to you, will you go into your bloody station and get somebody down to uh, this lady's house in uh, Sandy Hill Gardens? That is outrageous. That is shocking yeah. now. I'm really... I'm taken yeah. aback by that. So 10 o'clock last night, so 12, yeah. 12 hours later, nobody has shown up. Yeah. Nobody, exactly that is happening. that is unbelievable. Right, well, yeah. like I said, if any of the guards are uh, scooting around in their car or listening to us in the guard station in Ballymun, will you get yeah. your arses down to Sandy Hill Gardens, for God's sake? That is ridiculous. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Thanks very much. Um, how is your mum today, Adele? She's, well, she's not the better of it. Like, she hasn't really slept all night, so... She's just, just shaking up, like, it's just disgraceful. 
It's are, you, are, are you there with her now or are you at home yourself? No, I'm just at home myself because I have to take my daughter to the doctors now. She's not well. Oh, God, you've got your hands full. But yeah. listen, it, it, uh, give your mum our regards. And I want you to let me know before the end of the show if the guards turn up, will oh, you? Oh, of course, yeah. Um, will, send me a text in later on and let me know, because I that's will. absolutely outrageous. A 76-year-old yeah. woman's house is broken into, and 12 hours later, the guards still haven't shown up. Yeah, Shocking. that's exactly the way it is. All right, thanks to Dell and wish your man right, well. Thank thanks you. very much indeed. Um, that is shocking, lads, seriously. I know the guards are under-resourced and all that, but there's no excuse for a 12-hour wait for an elderly woman to have the guards come down to her after her house is broken into. Seriously, lads. Uh, Ashling, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Ashling? Hiya. Uh, Ashling, you're from Kill in County Kildare, uh, yeah. broken into last August. Yeah, the 2nd of August last year, yeah. Do the guards yeah. turn up in less than 12 hours? Yeah, they actually came down straight away. Oh, right, they okay. Well. And they'll have to say where they were brilliant. Okay, but uh, t- tell me exactly what happened. Uh, well, we went to bed and my husband was asleep downstairs. He fell asleep watching the television. And <clears throat> they must have fished the keys out of the letterbox because we have a table kind of be near enough to the door, you know. And they fished the keys out. They let themselves in. They came in to the kitchen. All the while, my husband is still asleep at the sitting room. Um, came into the kitchen and they took my bag. They also opened the press. That was above, um, in the microwave, above the microwave, and they took out 250 euro belonging to Kill Celtic, the football team, and they took my bag, my purse. Now, thank God, there's nothing in my purse, and uh, they took my car to make a quick getaway. My God! So now, now, in fairness, now we were lucky enough. We actually got everything back, the car back, the car was found up at Tallet, and my bag was found around the car with my purse and everything in it. So we were lucky in that in that way. But still, like I mean, I have a little fella, and he's really you know, upset, still still very upset about it, you know. And it, this is the point that we were making, the the effect, I mean, I just have that poor woman in Ballymun in my head that she didn't no. sleep at all last night, and I, you know, who could blame her? I'd be the exact same, and I'm not 76. Um, I just find it, uh, and this is what I was saying a while ago, the effect it leaves on people, that they, you just feel violated. Yeah, well, this is the thing, right, I mean, even leaving the house, even now, kind of leaving the house, when I came back to the other day and the alarm was going off, and I stood there for a minute, kind of going, "Oh God!" You know, like you are, you are nervous leaving your home. You know. All right, and uh, n- 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 nobody's been in since, I assume. No, thank God. Well, now, now I'm saying that now, <laughs> the little fella's bike was in the front garden. Now it was there for ages. Nobody came near it. But then, uh, just over Christmas, somebody took the bike. Now our own fault, one hundred percent, our own fault for leaving the bike in the garden. Mm. But still, yeah, bike gone. So. But again, it's your bike. You should be able to keep I know, it. Anyway, I know, can't be with, can't be with the days you could leave your door open and your neighbours would just walk in and out and all that. But it's not like that I anymore. Know. All right, Ashley, thanks very much indeed. Thanks. And let me just uh, wrap this up with uh, this uh, WhatsApp voice message. There you go, Adrian. Is that always quick to praise the police on your show? But when push comes to shove with them, they don't do nothing for anybody. Like 10 o'clock last night, that's that's 12 hours now, more than 12 hours since that's happened. And still not one guard has arrived at whole door. Look, it's it's ridiculous, carry on. 76 years of age, woman, the police want to be ashamed of themselves. No prize should be given to any of them. Good luck, lads. Good luck, good luck. Uh, you know, I have to uh, agree with that guy. Yes, we do quite often praise the guards, uh, but I certainly am not praising them in that instance. It is outrageous that 12 hours after a break-in uh, of a 76-year-old woman's house in Ballymun and the guards still haven't turned up. So if you happen to be walking past the guard station, just go in and tell them to get down there, will you please? It was down at um, Sandy Hill Gardens. It's in their system. They got a call about it. They've gotten calls about it. Adrian, finally, uh, I live in the Santry area and I work repairing glass and break-ins, etc. If you pass my number on to that lady in Sandy Hill, I will repair her glass free of charge and stick all her glass to ensure it can't come out again. Poor lady must be terrified. Thank you very much indeed, Keith. That is a very decent offer of you. And lads, can we follow up with, uh, with Keith on that? Thank Thanks very much indeed. Uh, that's very decent of you, Keith. Thanks very much indeed. Um, and then one more message. Um, what are the statistics for a burglar getting caught? Twice my parents' house was broken into and twice nobody was caught. As they say, a house alarm is only as good as uh, your neighbours. A house alarm, I have to be honest with you, if you have a monitored house alarm, and I know they're expensive, um, the, we have it at home and it's like €38 Euro a month or something like that, but... If your alarm goes off, the uh, control centre is onto you like a light. Now, I mean like a light. They're onto you within seconds, and they're onto the. If they don't get an answer for you, they're onto the guards in seconds. Uh, does it prevent break ins? 
maybe it cuts down it cuts down a little bit but somebody texted in a while ago uh, to say that the way to deal with this is to give all elderly people all senior citizens a free house alarm a free monitored house alarm and I would agree with that I have to say um I, I can't get that poor woman out of my head now. That's awful. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for all of your calls. This is Adrian. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks. Now on to something completely and utterly and totally different. 98FM's Dublin Talks. Call 6797981. Have you ever had lip fillers? <laughs> now, it's a topic we've never spoken before about, uh, yet it's huge for Irish women. You all know at least two women in your group of friends who've gotten lip fillers done. Some women become addicted to them, as uh, we will hear in a moment. Uh, Statistics out a few weeks ago from the States found the American Society of Plastic Surgeons highlighted an increase of 50% in lip augmentations for 18 to 55-year-olds between 2000 and 2018. Kylie Jenner has admitted that she's uh, hooked on lip injections. Programs like Love Island have also added to the buzz around lip fillers. Now, apparently, you know, because I know nothing about this, I have to be honest with you, one mil of lip fillers costs around €450. Euro. And if you're somebody who's ever had them done, I want to find out why. Call me now on 67979981. You can text or WhatsApp the programme on 0877 0877989898. Uh, Kerry Hanafy uh, is the owner of the Kerry Hanafy Clinic on South William Street, and she does uh, lip fillers. Kerry, welcome to 98FM. Good morning, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, Kerry, um, yes. how, this is... A, a very growing trend here in Ireland as well? It's a, a massive growing trend at the moment. Now, currently I'm doing lip fillers in Ireland. I came back from living in London for a while and since 2006. Um, I learned how to do it over there in 2004 and when I first came back in 2006, nobody knew what I was talking about. However, now in 2019, I have a very busy um, growing clinic, daily growing Um run by myself and owned by myself um, with medical practitioners. So we have doctors, dentists and nurses only treating patients. Um, So what we're finding, the biggest incidence and the biggest um, growing trend at the moment is yes, the the lip filler market is growing, but it's growing in more the um, non-medical practitioner route as well. Okay, Um, now... Why is there a difference? I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Are lip fillers just not little small injections into your lips? They they are, and and that's very simplified. So basically, the body when you when you introduce anything into the body, there's always a risk. So when you when you when you put a needle into something, the risks are that there's vessels there, there's um, veins, there's arteries. If you hit an artery. Um, people can go blind, people can get vascular cu- occlusions. Mm. These are happening, these incidents are increasing at a rate of second to none compared to the incidence of um, the amount of people having lip fillers. So what's happening within the, within the industry, because it is unregulated, um, yes, we're seeing, in, the reason you're seeing more lip fillers out there is because you're noticing the really bad lip fillers. So aesthetics really good aesthetics, you shouldn't notice that somebody has something done. So Okay, reason- so uh, what you're saying is there's a lot of slightly dodgy operations doing lip fillers as well without qualified medical personnel. Exactly. Okay, and, so, uh, and obviously you believe that's very important that you have qualified medical personnel. Absolutely, there's conferences going on on a daily basis, especially with the UK and Ireland at the moment to try and regulate everything. So it's a bit like the old building industry years ago when things were unregulated. We have to get regulation into the industry. So it's a, it's a new industry, it's aesthetics, and it's to try and become, because there's, there's, there's obviously people think there's a lot of money in it, so businesses will just do a course and put it out there. But because there's no regulations to stop anything, anybody doing it, it's not illegal to do this. However, when you have a young person going, looking on the on Instagram, looking to find somewhere to go that's reputable, they're only going, you know, so we're trying to educate them not to go just on price. So, so, what, so what is the deal here, Kerry? Why do women, and it is predominantly women, uh, why do they want to have bigger lips? 
And in actual fact, what we're noticing is the growing trend in men looking for lip Really? Yeah. Because I believe yeah, it or not, like I, I asked around yeah. the office here earlier on, um, and we talked to a lot of uh, women, and they all either have had it done or would love to have it done, or have friends who've had it done, but not one bloke admitted it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll continue that survey later on. <laughs> but it's, it, it's an increasing thing for men to get lip fillers. Absolutely, absolutely, because... The, the, the way the way the face is, so everybody generally has an asymmetrical face, which means one side of your face is very different to the other. So if you can skillfully, skillfully like painting a picture, correct the asymmetry in somebody's face, you make them look prettier. So not these lips that you see that look like ducks and somebody's coming around the corner and you can see the projection out. It's in fact, so, somebody just texted in, uh, it is ridiculous. Ladies walking around like Daffy Duck with big Absolutely. rubber lips. Yes. So they're the ones people are seeing. So they're the ones that are doing badly. Right. So, okay. So if I were to I go do, to I, somebody reputable like yourself, um, uh, the lips won't look as big and blown up and whatever. No. Like I'm in the industry and people have seen pictures of me. I've had my lips done. I'm 49 this year and I've had my lips done at least once or twice a year and I don't look like I've lip fillers. So it's done to stop me getting the little feathering around the, the top top of my lip. So it's an anti-aging treatment. So is, it, yes, it is it sore? It can be sore, yeah. So it is a needle, so any, any type of needle that's into the body. But we do use numbing cream. We have numbing um, injection. You know, the, the product, the numbing um, product is in the injection. So this is the other thing that we do hear stories of, of people going to clinics where there is no anesthetic in any of the, any of the products that they're using. Like any market that's growing, there is the cheap version of everything. Okay, so now, I, I want you to have a listen to a message that we got. Uh, this actually was yeah. sent in to us yesterday, and that's why we decided to talk about it. This was sent in to us yesterday by a guy called Darren. And he said, yeah. uh, you should do a show on lip filler injections. My girlfriend is only 23 and is addicted to them. She first yeah. got them over a year ago and now gets regular top-ups. Loads of her wages goes on them. She's obsessed with them. Is this normal? Is that a part of the thing that... Once you do it once, you have to keep doing it. No, no. So the other thing is if you're, if you're going to a medical practitioner who somebody has some sort of knowledge about body dysmorphia, so there's a person, like there's a, the incidence of body dysmorphia is quite big, so we have to be on red alert, really, with, with people that are coming in. So we turn people away and say, no, you're not getting any today. Your lips are big enough. Look at the picture. Look at your before picture. This is what you looked like before you came okay, here. Okay, so, so you will turn away business? Absolutely. On a regular, a daily basis, we turn people away. Okay, because you don't because need it done. Because they're going to no. look ridiculous. Yeah. So people that, that are just, um, if you go to somebody and they're just, you, you walk in and ask for two mils and they give you two mils, like that's not right. You know, you, okay, you, now you I know, know nothing about one, uh, one mil or two mil or whatever, but yeah. I understand that... One mil of lip filler will cost around 450 quid, is that right? It, no, no it, no, it does vary, it does vary. So here at our clinic, Kerry Hansen Clinic, it's 300 euros for a mil of filler. Okay, so and will, I, will it be noticeable if I get 300 euro worth of filler? Absolutely. Noticeable in, in a good way. Noticeable... Um, like, will my friends look at me and go, geez, what happened to you? Or no, will they just no, look at you kind of going, oh, um, something different there, but I'm, I'm, no. I'm not even going to say it. No, and a lot, a lot, it, it depends on the size of your lip. Like, like it's, the, it's the complete opposite. If you have very small lips and a very small face, you're only going to put in maybe 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5 of a mil. Not everybody, just because there's a mil in the syringe, when you put every, the whole lot into every, everybody. So it's down to the practitioner to, to look and design that lip for that particular person. So, you know, somebody who comes in and has a very small lip, I, I probably will only use 0.4 of the syringe. Right, OK. And then when they get off the bed, they look in the mirror and they, every single person loves it. Um, and they go away and even their boyfriends might not even notice it. Then you kind of wonder, what's the point? Because they, they can see it. Oh right, okay. So it's it's for yourself. And when you put your it is yeah. When you put your lip line on, you look prettier, and it's to do with symmetry. All right. Well, Kerry from uh, Kerry Hanfey uh, Clinic on South William Street. Thank you very much indeed for talking to thank us you. here at ninety eight FM. Um, after the break, I'm going to be talking to a woman who had them done. Did you ever have them done? Does your girlfriend or your wife have them done? And if so, why? That's the bit I'm trying to understand. And I know Kerry said that there's an increase in men uh, getting it done. I've yet to meet a man who ever got lip fillers. Maybe you are that man. Uh, call me now on 67979081. <laughs>
98 FM's Dublin Talks with Des Kelly Interiors. New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala. 98 FM. And this is Adrian Kennedy. Um, it's amazing the negativity that actually surrounds getting lip fillers done. Um, we got a um, message. Any uh, woman who alters their facial appearance um, needs to have a real think about her relationship. Here's a message that's come in to us on um, a WhatsApp voice message. I got my lips done in Kerry Hanapy last year. I got one mail done. They are so worth the money, so professional. Um, it was just always something I was so self-conscious of. It was not for anybody else. Not many people even noticed I got them done. Um, it was just for myself to feel more confident when I was wearing my makeup or on day-to-day basis. I couldn't recommend Kerry Hanapy more. Oh, right, okay. It's not an ad for Carrie, but yes, I take the point. Um, or Carrie, is that her name, Carrie or Carrie? But anyway, um, uh, Claudia, you do get lip fillers yourself. Hi, yes. Um, I've been getting them for the last two years. Why? Um, the thing is, I had no lips when I started off, like, you know, and I think it was the pressure, pre-pressure that I saw other people getting them done and I really wanted those big, juicy lips myself. And um, I have went But if you, to, sorry, if you said, you say you had very f- f- small lips, did yeah. you not, you wanted big juicy ones, would it not have made you look a bit funny? No, because the thing is, like, I have been going to Kerry myself, and Kerry doesn't make them look funny, like, you know, she makes them look very natural, and even though they are a lot bigger than what I had to start off with, nobody ever asked me, um, do, do I have my lips done, you know, because they look so natural, like. Okay, so does anyone ever notice? Um, I mean, people that know me um, that would have, would have seen me with small lips and then they would have seen me with big lips, like, yeah, they would notice that. But people that never see me, they would never be like, oh, did you get them done? Because I don't have that duck um, effect that people are talking about, you know. But you do agree do that. That, that some of the, the young ones mainly walking around look ridiculous and don't even yeah, realise how ridiculous they look. Absolutely, and you can look at them and they even, like, pout as well, like, you know, to even make them even look even bigger, or even like that duck face, and looks absolutely ridiculous, but that's because they go to the wrong places, you know. A lot of people just get, like, one-day or two-day courses, and they think they're professional, like, you know, so, like, you have to be very <sighs> careful who you go to, you know, because it can actually ruin your face by going to the wrong person. Okay, so, and uh, that is, uh, it would appear, part of the problem, that some, be, some people are going to, uh, people who are doing it and aren't properly regulated because they're getting it for cheaper. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks, Claudia. Uh, does it make uh, you feel more confident? Oh, big time, big time. Like, you know, the smile is completely different, and, and you know, I love the photos, and, it, like, it makes me uh, like, a lot more confident, that's for sure. Okay, now I did say earlier on that uh, we tried talking about, we tried asking men around our office earlier on and there's lots of men around here and not one would at least admit that they got lip fillers done. Maybe they did and we just didn't notice. But Kevin uh, is in Kildare and Kevin, you're a man who's had them done but you also work in the industry as well. Yes, I am indeed. Okay, so, let's talk uh, about the first bit first. You're a man who got them done. Yeah. I have like a, a lower kind of underboy and my top lip is kind of non-existent. So um, when I I gave it a go and it actually enhanced my look and made me feel more confident about my smile. Okay. Um, why were you not? I mean, I can't see my lips, um, so I don't know what they look like. How did you? So no, what I'm getting at is I don't know what difference it would make to me if I had nicer lips. What did it do for you? Yeah, well, well, for me, like it looked like I didn't have a top or lip. It was something I always noticed. Um, and it wasn't until I got into the industry I realised that something could be done about it, you know? So you did, and then you get in, you're in the industry, and are you uh, running a, a decent place with medical professionals? You know, I, I'm i actually... I do more permanent makeup, and I host kind of clinics um, around the country in different salons. So... Um, and uh, by, by all accounts, it has become incredibly popular and is increasing yeah. every year by the sounds of it. Hugely. And it's not always vanity, which is, would have been the, the opinion I was before I got into this industry. Um, and it's not. It's, it's uh, insecurities. Anytime you're looking in the mirror and you're, you're not happy, you know, that's an issue. Yeah, you see, maybe I'm just one of those people. I look in the mirror and I'm sure I could be bet down ugly and I'm still happy enough for <laughs> myself. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, well, for, for many, it's not like that, you know. 
Well, stay there for a second. Peter, would you ever get lip fillers? Not a chance, Adrian. Oh. No, no, oh, wait, no okay. way. And, I, uh, I, I, I sent a message into you last year about uh, the sunny weather and, and the women with the collagen lips, you know, with their, uh, with their um, soft tops down and the, the whole lot. Looks ridiculous. Absolutely, look, it's now in fairness, though. No, but, but, yeah, okay. for, for, med- for medical reasons, I think, yeah, absolutely. Okay, but yeah. you, heard, you heard us already talking about how some of the uh, women or men, for that matter, uh, are getting it done in kind of not properly organised and run um, outfits yeah, and, they're totally, wa- totally. and they're walking out with a duck face. Um, they look ridiculous. They look absolutely ridiculous. I, I see it all the time. And this, this whole pow thing. You know, I swear to God, I see another stupid looking pout on, 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 on Instagram and Facebook. I'm just going to delete it because they look a sham. You know what I mean? These big, juicy, horrible, red looking lips that are not natural. They make them look awful. But the, I, I, they're the ones, from what I'm uh, I'm hearing, that aren't being done properly. They uh, are. Adrian, not- come on, you have the, you have all these people, right? You have people that are famous all over Instagram with the stupid lips that are getting it done in the highest of profile of the places. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, you can't turn around and tell me that's somebody that's done a two-day course that's went and done uh, Talisa Constantinople's lips. You know what I mean? It's, uh, okay, you just think it's a ridiculous thing. And, in fact, somebody else, uh, ju- and, in fact, Kevin, I'll put this to you as somebody who's in the business. Somebody just uh, rang us to say uh, they would be better off spending the money uh, that they get the lip fillers on uh, a consultation to deal with their insecurities. No. Like... To be quite honest, like when what that guy was talking about and um, people with large lips, and he said, right, that is much the doctor or nurse's fault. Right? Yes, you, you need to be able to say no to people like that. That that is like uh, an issue. It's it's about balance. This whole treatment is for corrective. It's more corrective surgeries and things, and for enhancing, I suppose. Um, and it's I mean, it, it, it's not a vanity thing, in your opinion. In a lot of cases, in some uh, cases, it definitely uh, is. Absolutely not. I, I get, um, no, like, for you maybe yeah. not, but it, you have to accept that it is in some cases. But look, Kevin, I'm, I'm way out of time. Thank you very much indeed for your call, and thank you all of you for your calls. This is ninety eight FM's Dublin Talks. Now, in just a moment, because it's Friday, I want you to share with us your good news Friday stories. <laughs> Good News Friday is where we get you to share your good news of whatever it is that has happened to you today or this week. And it can be the smallest little thing in your world, but it is good news for you. Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. And for the best good news story this Friday, we have passes for IMC Cinemas to give away. Good News Friday is next. Live and exclusive to Dublin's 98 FM, Monday through Friday between 10 and midday. This is Adrian Kennedy. You're with 98 FM's Dublin Talks. And Trish is here with Friday's top headlines. Thanks, Adrian. The CAO has been compared to the M50 in that it has flaws, but it's still necessary. It comes ahead of the 5.15 p.m. deadline for students to register their college courses. Questions have been raised in the past as to whether the system is fit for purpose. The government's being urged to publish a report into the cost overrun at the National Children's Hospital as soon as it receives it, it, after it was revealed yesterday that the final cost could be more than €2 billion. The appeal by killers of a Limerick man murdered in the US almost four years ago continues today. Jason Corbett was beaten to death in August 2015 at his home in North Carolina. His wife Molly and her father Tom Martins are serving 20 to 25 year sentences for the second degree murder. And the status yellow snow ice warning remains in place. Met Aaron says Dublin is likely to avoid heavy snow but we need to be on the lookout for ice. Severe frosts and sub-zero temperatures are expected right up until Sunday. And are you up to date on 19? Now we get we get so dramatic about the weather. It wasn't half as bad as people were expecting. Stocking up in bread. I was down in Cork yesterday. Nine degrees it was glorious. Lovely. Was lovely yeah. Thank you, Trish. This is ninety eight FM's Dublin Talks. I'm Adrian Kennedy, and with it being Friday. Oh no 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 no! Not that button. Uh, this button is the one I want to press because with it being Friday, every Friday we like to bring you GNF. Bum, 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 bum. Good news Friday. And by the way, that's not coming in there either. So you've, you're the one with the issue. Sorry about that. Yep. Uh, now, Good News Friday is uh, a little feature we like to do every week where we get you to share with us your good news story. And it can be literally anything. It can be the smallest, most simple little thing. Or it can be um, something really major in your life. But for you, it is 
good news. So we want to hear from you. Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98 0877 98 98 98. What is your good news story? Have you good news, Adrian? Because you, you've a smile on your face all day today. What? You've a smile on your face all day today. What's what's happening in your... I'm life? just in a good mood. Okay. So maybe that's the good news, is it? My good news is I took your advice. Last week, if you were listening to the show, uh, we were talking about car insurance. And Adrian is a big man for shopping around for car insurance. Yep. And I was telling him that my car insurance is up uh, on the 2nd of February. And uh, I was being lazy about it, not bothering shopping around. And uh, my, the right honourable gentleman, Adrian, said, No, Jeremy, shop around for car insurance. Yep. It will save you a lot of money correct um, so I spent two hours the other day shopping around for cheaper car insurance and I got it how much did you save? 180 oh, euro. Right, yeah. it's, it's, it's better, better than all right. Pockets, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that's going to pay for a nice um, night away for myself and the wife. Very good. I mean, 180 quid is not to be stopped. No, it's not. It's not. And I, I recommend it to anybody. Uh, now, sh- it's a bit of hassle. Ah, yeah, I did this. I went onto one of those car insurance price comparison sites, you know, one of those, and you have to input all your details and, you know, where does your, where do, where's your car parked at night and, and all that sort of stuff? Does it have an alarm and how many years no claims bonus and blah, 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 blah. And halfway through it, I was giving up the wheel to, to finish it, but I did finish it, uh, came back within five minutes and a quote, 180 quid cheaper. Happy days. Okay. What is your good news story? Text, it's on the floor there. It's on the floor. Oh, where is it? Um, anyway, text us your good news story to 0877 98 98 98. It is Good News Friday. And uh, one lucky caller will win themselves a uh, movie passes for IMC Cinemas. Now, we have our um, special Friday uh, guest, Mr. Dixon well, Jr., uh, with his good news. Over to you, Luke. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Today, my good news is that I got to play in the snow. It was so much fun, we even had a snow fight. I threw a snowball at Mama and Daddy when they weren't looking. (laughs) I was covered in snow. Yeah, you were. From head to toe. (laughs) It was so much fun. I really hope we get more snow. No, 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 no. Because do you want to build a snowman? Stop singing that oh, song. Yes, oh, I do. Stop singing that Tell song. Tell me your news. Call 6797981. <laughs> Call Katie and Jamie now. 98. The sound of the city. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Um, I talk- he gets more and more of a brand man every week. Yeah, everything's about branding. It was interesting talking about... Uh, there was a meme going around on Facebook during the week and it showed the difference between your reaction to snow when you're a kid and when you're an adult. And it showed a picture of a kid. When snow arrives and you're, like, my son's age, it's like, yippee, snow! Yep. When you get to our age oh, and snow arrives, oh, Jesus, I'll have to dig the car out of the garden. I'm not going to be able to get into work. I've no bread in the house. Yeah, it becomes tedious. It's yeah. just like, I don't want snow. No, Do you want no, snow? No, absolutely Lovely not. up the mountains. Anyway, um, I do recall you telling me a couple of years back that your son will never watch um, that movie. Which movie? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre? No, do you want to build a snowman? What's the name of the movie, Katie? Frozen, Hater. Oh, Frozen, yeah. Okay, here's my, my, my answer to this. Um, he clearly knows the song off by heart. You know, he watches Frozen. Um, oh. I, Frozen does not get watched when I'm at home. I can't control what my wife does with my child when, when she's at home and uh, I'm not there. So um, it's not my fault he's singing Frozen songs, but I can tell you there's a, there's a sequel to Frozen out next year. He's not bloody going to it. He will be. Uh, now, Daryl. Yeah? Daryl, um, I'm reading on my screen what your good news is, but I, for the life of me, can't see how it's good news. Um, what is your good news this Friday? I'm on my way to the dentist to get a root canal. And that's good news how? Um, I don't know if you exactly call it good news, but, uh, yeah, get it done. It has to be done. Does, do, yeah. don't, don't tell him this. Do you know how much a root canal costs? Yeah, a lot of money. About, yeah. four, about 450. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, anyway, you, by, by what time are you, What time's your appointment? Uh, half 11. Half 11, okay. And whereabouts, where's the dentist? Port Leash. Port Leash. Now, um, Port Leash, getting your uh, root canal done, by this evening you'll be grand, you'll be able to eat and everything on it, will you? 
I think so. Hopefully, yeah. I would yeah. need to wait for a while to get the crown on it. But yeah, hopefully, it'll be after. But I, I don't know if you know this, uh, and I've had three root canals done. I'm an expert in root canals. Do you know root canal can't be done in one go? Like, they have to do it in several different goes. It's not a one day jobby. Yeah, just a second. Just a second part. And did you get that big mask put over your face that goes in your mouth? I, I don't know. I usually get a, an injection at my hand to start uh, intravenous sedation. Oh, you do it the, the you do it the chickens way out. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, leave him yeah. alone. No, you can't go under a sedative for yes, a root canal. Yes, you can. Yes, all, you can. No. Daryl, good luck with it. Okay. Actually, oh, yeah, I, I have to spare a thought for my own daughter Laura. Yeah. Yes. Uh, next week, uh, oh, actually on Valentine's Day, wisdom. she's getting a wisdom tooth oh, out. Yeah. Not only is she getting one out. She's getting all four out on the one day. Oh, well, you're better off doing it all in one day. I got mine taken out and I'll remember. Now, I didn't take a sedative. I, I took it like a man, Adrian. But I remember he was drilling into my jaw to get the wisdom tooth out and it was so stuck in my mouth that he had his knee up on my chest. He was oh literally reefing the wisdom tooth. So Laura's out. getting all four out on Valentine's Day. So She won't be kissing any fellows on Valentine's Night. She won't. Uh, now, Ella, what is your good news story? Hi. Hi. Um, I just left um, a, a meeting uh, with one of the one person really that um, uh, you know we are looking for investors into the new business that's coming to the Irish market. Right. So um, it's a basically a new business that we're going to have for the girls done. You know where you can hire best from different designers all over the world, and you can get your hair, your makeup done in one place, and if you go to a wedding, a prom, a prom, or what have you. So that was a very good news for me today. Fantastic. So obviously, uh, because it's early doors, you can't really give us much detail about the business, can you? I can indeed, because oh. we are already up and running. Oh, I so see. We are, yeah, we are called Queendom. Um, so like a kingdom, you know, but Queendom. Queendom, yeah. Girls. <laughs> yeah. And we are already up and running. We have the website up and running. Uh, so it's queendomltd.com, a little bit of advertising. And, we and, and sorry, what, what exactly do you do? So for now, we kicked off online. So we're kind of selling dresses for the special occasions right. from designers, really. And but the next stage, that's what the meeting was about, is to getting uh, getting the property and moving in with the you know with all the services in one place. So kind of the dresses will be there, the, the, the hairdressers, the makeup artists, all of there in one place so that we can have a girl come in, but let's say she goes to the dabs or something. She comes into us, she rents the dress out for the night, and then, you know, we do her hair, her makeup, and all in one place, saving money, saving time, and also it will be that very important fantastic. And, and the point of your good news is you had a meeting with an investor today and everything went swimmingly and hopefully will invest in the company. Yeah. Ha, exactly, fantastic. Exactly. That is great news. Thanks very much, Ella. Thanks. What is your good news? Text or WhatsApp 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. What is your, <coughs> excuse me, what is your good news? Uh, where am I going now? I am going to Martin. You're on 98 FM. How are you, Martin? Good, good, good morning. Hi, Martin. Uh, Martin, um, your good news is that you're going to be watching Ireland play England uh, tomorrow afternoon at about, I think it's at a quarter of five or something like quarter to four, quarter to five, something like that. Uh, but it's the location you're going to be watching the match. Yeah, I'll fly out to Alicante tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Ah, fantastic. And you will be in Alicante uh, by, it'll be, it's almost a quarter to five here, so it's a quarter to six over there. You'll be well over there. Oh, yeah, I'll be in the hotel and all by 3 o'clock. Straight down to the pub? Straight down to the most English bar I can find with my Ireland jersey. Oh, really? Are you actually going to do that? Oh, yes, why not? You have to. <laughs> Although the thing about rugby is rugby heads are, are grand. You won't have any animosity. No uh, trouble. Yeah, there'll be no be trouble at all. Do you know, there no, trouble? It'll be a great buzz. OK. Uh, yeah, I, 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 watched, I watched Ireland play Wales a couple of years ago in a pub in Galway full of Welsh people. We were the only Irish people in this Galway pub and the crack we had was it was incredible. It was brilliant. Uh, yeah, I, it'll always just be banter. Yeah, it will be. Is this a big deal, the Six Nations? Oh, yeah. yeah, be, yeah. What, have you never heard of it? Well, no, I've heard of it, but I'm not a rugby fan. No, so but, and, and, and like, like Martin said, uh, be no bother to him with his Irish jersey on to go down to an English bar in Alicante and have the crack. You, you, you'll have a ball. Enjoy it, Martin. Cheers, thanks, guys. Have a That's great day, news, though. great news. Um, so, yeah, Jeremy, give it a try. Quarter to five tomorrow. Ireland versus England. I've never watched a rugby match, though. Watch so. it tomorrow. How, how long is it? What's, what's each half? Uh, 40 minutes each half. Not too long.
Mr. Soccer Match is 45. I know, but that's that's exciting. It's not. That's the point. Oh, really? That's the point. If you started walk, watching a rugby match, soccer just seems tedious. But that's a very controversial statement. Are you saying that rugby is more exciting than soccer? It is. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. In, in what regard? You could watch a whole football match and no goal will be scored. But obviously, Zero. Yeah, but that's the whole, that's the whole thing. Nil about. all. Like, seriously. I've been to nil-all matches that have been yeah. very exciting. And, uh, how, can, how can a nil-all match no, be exciting? Can't, no, can't. no. Um, But in rugby, you never get nil-all. Ever. Never, ever, ever. Oh, you can't draw a rugby match. I mean, you can, but I've never been at one. I've never seen one. I've never heard of one that ended in nil-all. Yeah, but game matches are often tied and they're exciting. Yeah, but not a nil-all. No, you'll not never... Not with no score. Oh, literally, yeah. I, okay, okay, fair enough. Right. Yeah. Try it. Four to five. Where are you going to watch it? Uh, I don't know yet, actually. Can I, can I come with you? Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, do I have to sit there telling you what's going on? No, do, no, no, no. Do they all kiss their crest during the match and all? Like, kiss their, their crest on their island jersey and go, I love you. Come on, Jamie Heaslip. No. Oh, that doesn't happen. No. Okay. Carl, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Carl? Hi, Adrian. How's it going? Good, thank you, Carl. Carl, what is your good news? Adrian, I, my good news today is I'm absolute buzzing. I am sitting in the job and I can't wait for tomorrow. I am going to Vegas. Yay! Oh, what a what a gaff! What a place! Uh, my now, first time, by the way. Is it? Yeah. I, I tell you what it is about Vegas. Don't tell him about that. Wait, wait till he gets over <laughs> to find out himself. <laughs> um, uh, well, you've never been. Are, are you a gambler? Not not a big gambler. No, wouldn't be a major gambler. Like okay. A little depo. Here's the thing about Vegas. You'll either love it. Or you'll hate it. Right, okay. Are you are you into gambling? That's what I just uh, asked him. Were you yeah. not listening? I know if you work for a gambling company, so I wouldn't be No, a but I mean, gambler. how much are you? Are you a passive gambler or are you... No, a, a pleasurable gambler. <laughs> because here's the thing, you will find the tables quite intimidating, won't you, Adrian? Yeah. Uh, myself and Adrian and gamblers, and yeah. you're sitting at these tables with high rollers who are who are betting like a thousand dollars a hand, and here's you with your bag. I had a fanny pack on me with change in it. You know those fanny packs? <laughs> no. Yeah, I did. And you have your fanny pack with your dollar bills in it, and you're going up to the tables with these Texans, and they're like, put a hundred dollars down, <laughs> and you're like, have you got change of two dollars, please? Ah, uh, sure. You know, but, uh, you know, it, it, you know it's, it's oh, God, it's thirteen years. I was there but um, it's an amazing place it'll be a brilliant experience Carl I oh, can't wait the five is going over so we're just looking forward to it the only downside we missed the match on the way but hell whatever oh you're actually in the air are you we'd be, we'd be in the air for oh, a few no. hours before, oh that's lousy alright Carl best luck look, have a great time much. cheers man did right, you bye. like it or hate it uh, I enjoyed the experience, but I wouldn't be in a rush back. That's no, the best I way I can I wouldn't describe go it. back either. I found it seedy, isn't it? Very seedy. I know, I didn't. It's only seedy if you go looking for seedy. Obviously, I did go looking for seedy. <laughs> no, then. no, I didn't find it seedy. I just found it uh, tacky. Yeah, there's, tacky like, there's, there's, the a, there's a hotel there called the. Um, the Parisian. No, the Venetian. Oh, the Venetian, Venetian. Yeah, yeah. And it's made to look like Venice. It doesn't look like Venice, though. Well, we went on the gondola. Like, uh, it's been and pulled by a thing under the water. Like. Yeah, it's on tracks. Yeah. It's <laughs> it was just... such a letdown. Yeah. Because we always thought it'd be romantic, myself and the missus sitting in a gondola with your man singing just one cornetto. And we got onto the gondola and your man's there and he's no more Italian than I am. And he's no more rowing the boat either. No, and he wasn't rowing the boat, but he started off, just one cornetto. He wasn't actually singing that song. And then at the end of it, he says, I hope that was a swell trip for you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not Italian. Anyway, I'm glad I, I'm glad I experienced Vegas, uh, but I, my overriding impression of it is it's just a little bit tacky. But then we have friends who go back every year. Every year. My yeah. brother's, brother's-in-law go over every year, every single year. For shows? No, no, no. They go oh. over to play poker tournaments and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> If you are in a situation where you have a child with your ex, this topic will definitely interest you. Supposing your ex has now moved on and is in a new relationship. Has the person that they're in the new relationship with any right to discipline your child? I'm going to be reading a, a, an email that we got probably last weekend, actually. Uh, just haven't had a chance to get around to it. Uh, from a Dublin mother who is really annoyed over this. Um, her six-year-old was basically disciplined by her partner's fiancé or new boyfriend or whatever. Is it okay for his new uh, partner, which is not new, they were engaged to be married, uh, to discipline her child? We'll deal with that straight after the break. 98 FM Dublin Talks With Des Kelly Interiors New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala 98 FM And this is Adrian Kennedy with you until uh, midday today Now, next on the programme 
How would you feel if your child came home from a visit to daddy and said, Daddy's girlfriend put me on the naughty step? Well, have a listen to this message. This is a situation that one particular uh, Dublin mother has found herself in and she has gotten in contact with us. And here's what she writes. And I'd love to get your opinions on this. I'm fuming writing this. I have a six-year-old daughter with my ex and we broke up ages ago. He's with someone else for the last two years and engaged and she seems nice enough, even though I've only met her a few times. Yesterday, I found out something that has my head spinning. My daughter was over in her dad's house yesterday and when she came home, she told me, Daddy's girlfriend put me on the naughty step yesterday because I was bold. I was like, what the hell? She has no right to discipline my daughter. She was being bold, fair enough, but it's not her place to put my little girl on the naughty step. I was about to go over to the house and lift her out of it, but my sister calmed me down. If I don't put a stop to this and tell this one that she's no right to discipline my little girl, it will happen again. Have any of your listeners been in this situation before? Please don't read out my full name. And that's from um, a lady who just signs her name, O. Now, I would love to hear from you on this on 67979081. You can text or WhatsApp the program 0877 989898. 0877989898. I would love to hear from you on this um, and a- answer the question. Is it okay for... Now, it's not like she beat the living daylights out of the child... Uh, The girl was over in daddy's house and daddy's fiance gave out to her basically and put her on the naughty step. And this lady, O, who sent us the message, is fuming. Would you be? Or is it okay? And it's not like they're only after starting a relationship, This uh, the the daddy and the girlfriend. They're they're engaged to be married, so it's a serious relationship. So she's going to be around uh, for the foreseeable future. She's going to be involved in this young girl's uh, life, whether mammy likes it or not. Um, Is it okay for somebody who's not their mammy to discipline the child? Call me right now on 6797981. It's the old wicked witch thing, isn't it? It's the old stepmother, evil stepmother thing. And this is where people seem to get bothered. Um, Kevin is listening to us in Longford. You're on 98FM, Kevin. How are you? Not too bad, Adrian. You? Good, thanks, Kev. Um, you believe that this is okay, that children need to be disciplined? Well, to be honest, I think she's blown things out of proportion a little bit. The child is running around, running around, but um, who's going to discipline the child if the father's not there? So, no, I, I don't actually know if the father was there, actually. She doesn't say that in her message. That's a good question, actually. But anyway, um, the young girl even admitted that she was bold. Exactly. If the, the child admitted she was bold, then, like, what are you going to do? Let the child run rampant? Further on down the line, the child is going to end up not, not respecting any authority from whether it be the girlfriend, the mother, the father... Because but can you okay? Can you can, place. can you understand why this lady O is annoyed about it? In one sense, yeah. But to go blown off the handle, she can approach things a bit more diplomatically and and just say, look, if you think the child is behaving excessively bad, maybe then. But it, it, there's a fine line between. I, I have two small children myself, and. One of them is three, another one's eight. Mm. And if I thought either my children were misbehaving in someone else's house, um, one of the kids went for a play date and they were misbehaving in someone else's house, I'd hope the person who was in that house would discipline the child and say, look, that's wrong, your behaviour is not right. Now, like you said, there's excessive discipline. It's not like she, she slapped the child around the place. No, she, she didn't. She, she, put, she put the child on, on, the, the bold step. on the bold step, yeah. And said to her, look, your behaviour is not acceptable. You're going to have to sit there now for whatever amount of time she told her to sit there for. Okay, so your point is that this mother needs to accept that when she's not in her care, when she's in daddy's care, she still needs to be disciplined. She still needs to be told that she can't behave like that, whether it's by her daddy or by um, his Whether fiance. it's by the daddy, the girlfriend, the, the child minder, the grandmother... The child needs to be disciplined, regardless of, of who it is disciplining the child. Like, you can't let a child run around being rampant. Uh, for example, look at a group of young lads out in Terrell's down there. Obviously, they weren't disciplined, and now look at the retaliation from them at an older stage of life. 
Yep, fair enough. Okay, stay there for one second. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. Have a listen to this WhatsApp voice message. If somebody's putting some out on a naughty step and all that, that's acceptable because they've got to be disciplined. But if you're going to touch another man's or another woman's child, then you better be prepared to be touched yourself. Because if anybody touched my kids, they'd be edge rolling. Okay, I'd love to hear from you. Is is this lady O the only one who has a problem with this? If you want to support her, call us on 67979081. Now, she hasn't done anything about it. You heard what she said. Her sister calmed her down and uh, she hasn't gone and attacked her. But I imagine um, the child's daddy is going to get a right ear bashing. Unless she decides, well, I know she's listening into this conversation, or at least she asked us to talk about it for this very reason. Um, let me go to Shane is in Bally Farm. You're on 98FM, Shane. How are you? Not too bad, how are you? Good, thank you, Shane. Um, you have a stepdaughter. Yeah, 18 uh, years now. All right, okay. So during those 18 years... Yep. Are you, uh, well, firstly, is, is Daddy around as well? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Like, lovely okay. man. Lovely man. man. Very you good, know, yeah. Man. You know what I mean? We always have we'd have a conversation if he's up at the door or there's no animosity around and that never has never been. Very good. Okay, that's good to hear. You know what I mean? There's no there's no need to be like you know what I mean? Okay. And like, so in your house during the during her growing up years, did you give out to her? My rules in my house. Yeah, of course it is. My rules in my one thing we've never done, we've never raised a hand to our kids. No, and that's we're fine. And that's fine. And, and I could understand, by the way. If this woman was losing her, you know what? Uh, because well, you're, I don't. because you're no, because your woman had smacked her or something. She didn't. Yeah, she did. The thing about it is, she's gonna have, she's gonna have to grow up herself and realize that she has a six year old daughter with someone else. Their relationship didn't work out, whatever reasons it is. So if he's gonna be in a new relationship, what? Well, if that girl not allowed to say anything, so when that girl's 14, 15, and sixteen and being misbehaving and say drinking or smoking, she's not allowed to say anything either. Then she's gonna have to realize that there's gonna be times where she's gonna have to bite her lip. And realise that maybe instead of the girl hitting her, she put her on the naughty step. Was that not a good thing to do? Yes. To show well, you, her you, you would think so, wouldn't you? Yeah, to uh, have a bit of respect for people and all that. Now, I, I, I understand she's probably hitting the room saying, how dare that girl tell me? And that's exactly what she's thinking, that. yeah. Yeah, but she's not actually, she's not hitting her. She hasn't raised her hand to her. She's just telling her, listen, in this house there's rules and you have to abide by them. Pity more parents or more step parents. Don't do that to kids. Like my, 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 because my, it is my a, it, it, sorry to, Shane to cut across you. It yeah. is a very difficult thing um, for step parents um, or even somebody who's in a new relationship with somebody who is a, a, a parent. Is is that fine line between um, you know you're in my house but you're not actually my child? And there is a bit of a a bit of a difference, is there not? Yeah, but there is, there is a difference if if it's a case of you're only going out with a girl a month or two. These are two years in a relationship, they're engaged. So obviously the girl is going to be in the child's life for the rest of their life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm not talking about one time, no, it's only a month, it's only with you in two months yet, then I'd have a problem with it. Like if, if, if the fella is going out with a girl, different girl, or, or a girl is going out with a different man. Okay, different. but in this case, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking exactly. about a, a couple who are together a couple of years, they're engaged to be married, so it's a serious relationship, and she's going to be around for the foreseeable. Yeah, and what happens, what happens when they have kids together? Is the other, is the is the ex going to say now? Oh, you're not allowed to be around them, them kids. You can tell these kids what to do, but you don't have to listen to her because she's not your mammy. I'm your mammy. That's not a way to be either. You have to be grown up about it. You know what I mean? At one stage, they loved each other as man and man and thing. So she has to realise that. Yeah, he's with this different girl. Yeah, we're not in love anymore. Yeah, we have a child together, but she's going to have to be disciplined in other houses as well. Other people have different rules. She would have been bringing up kids. Once she doesn't hear her. Like, I've never raised my hand to my daughter. No, no and, and that's fine. And, and again, as I said, if that lady O was complaining that uh, this woman had hit her child, I'd be completely with yeah. her. I would understand that. That's fine. 100%. But that's not what we're talking about. She put her on no, the bolster. she step. needs to. Yeah, she needs to. Yeah. And, that, and that's good. That's a good discipline. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's showing the child that, listen, I can't be bald in this house or I'm going to get put on a naughty step. And it works brilliant with kids because I hate seeing pe- kids being hit and being slapped and all. There's no need to. If you come down to their level, actually get down on your hunkers and talk to them face to face and then put them on the naughty step and make them realise they learn quicker and they learn manners and respect for elder, elderly people. I know when I was growing up, if I stepped out of line, my next door neighbour, especially my next door neighbour's house or my granddad and Anna's house, I get clipped around the ear. I, my God, I didn't do it the next time. All right, stay there for one second, Shane, because yeah. Amanda, you sent us a message a moment ago saying, I've been through this, it is not acceptable, it's the responsibility of the father. 
Yeah, that's correct. I'm in full agreement with that lady that wrote in. Um, yeah, I've actually been through this situation. Um, now, myself and my child's father discussed the whole situation. And with regard to his partner, the, we did discuss it with her. That, yeah, down hunkers face to face. Your behaviour is not acceptable. Mm-hmm. You wait. You wait till dad comes home. I'm going to have to tell dad what you've done. Okay. Now, and like, like, it, like I said, now, simple as leave it to the actual parents to do the discipline. However, you have to show them a line, and if they cross the line, well, then they've got to pay the consequences. They don't have a right to put a child on the post step. Simple as the right belongs, and the responsibility belongs to both the parents. And if the parents are not living up to that responsibility, well, then obviously the child is going to be both. But they have to know, yeah, there's boundaries, but stepmom or stepdad are not going to cross a certain line that they will pass back all the information of their behaviour and the parents will deal with the situation. But sure, that's putting it on the long finger. Sometimes discipline has to be dealt with there and then. No, I don't think discipline. Discipline is an ongoing, it's an ongoing job of a parent towards a child. It doesn't happen there and then. It happens over their lifetime. Okay, Shane, that's the way you should deal with it. Um, uh, no. Do you, wait till your dad gets home. I'm going to tell him what you did when, no, when he gets absolutely, home. Absolutely not. So then, that, that, no, that, Adrian, that, hold on a second. That's not what I said. Me, Adrian, kind of did, what, Amanda. No, Adrian, what I said was you go down on, down your knees, face to face, tell the child what they've done is not acceptable. It's bull behaviour. And if they're not willing to behave... Well, then, Daddy's going to find out. We'll sit down, we'll discuss it, and we'll know what to do from now on. Okay, now I don't know it's what not this... A, it's not, hang on, you I, don't I, put a child in a boat, step and close the door on it. Nobody said about closing and doors. And leave it there. You don't, put, you don't do that to a child. If you communicate with a child in a way that they can understand on their level, then they will get to us. But you've got to understand that with the young child at the age four, five, six, or seven is dealing with a situation where mom and dad don't live together and there's an, another lady in the picture, whether it be two, three, four years are in the picture. The simple fact is, the child knows that's mom, that's dad, and this other lady is here, or this other man is here. I had to put my own daughter through child play therapy to get her to try and understand the whole situation oh, at that age. They didn't, she didn't understand it. Didn't understand what? What part she did she not understand? understand? She didn't understand the dynamic. Hold on a second. Here's mom and dad. Mom and dad used to do the disciplining. And now here's stepmom or stepdad coming into the picture. And they're disciplining me. And what age would your child have been? Would you have five? Five. Okay. So up until the age of five, she would have known mammy and daddy together. Is that right? No, she never knew mammy and daddy together. Right. So daddy daddy left when mammy was pregnant. Right. Okay. So she never knew mammy and daddy together. And then uh, daddy gets a, has a new woman in his life and... It, like, in terms of discipline, was this new woman severely disciplining the child or, or what? I mean, you say you, you've you been through this. Yeah, I have been through this and the matter was discussed when uh, my daughter started to, to visit with this woman who is uh, actually married to my ex-husband now. But when that all started, it was all discussed. Everything was OK. We made agreements on how far she could go with regards to discipline. OK, but the main discipline was to come to, from mom and dad, but that she was allowed to go to a certain point. In other words, explaining to a five-year-old in a five-year-old's language how she has to behave in their home. In other words, daddy's rules are the same as mommy's rules, mm. which means step rules are going to be the same, but daddy will have to be told about the situation. But you're explaining that to a five-year-old in a but five-year-old okay, But what's term. wrong? What's now, wrong with hold on, second, Sylvia? hold on a second. My my oh ex husband never left my daughter on his own on her own with his stepwife ever. Really? Wow. Why? Yes. Why? Because he was her father. It was up to him to and raise what, her. The, the, hang on, the, so hang on. The one the woman that he married isn't responsible enough to look after the child. No, she wasn't. Wow. Do you want to know why? No, I don't want to know why because I don't want you We're, to be identified and I don't want her to be identified and I don't oh, want no, him no, to be identified. Oh, no, no, I'm not using any names. I'm not using any names, Adrian. I'm not at all. No, I, 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 Amanda, has, Amanda. Look, I, at the I, end no, of the door, no, 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 no,
Mm. Sorry, say that again. There's a man that's in her life now. Is he able to tell the child what to do if he's being involved in their house? And does she go out on a night out and leave the children at home with our new fella? Well, Amanda. The old the man in. Oh, right, okay. No, the, my ex husband doesn't get involved with her children. I didn't say that. I said, no, you, you, you have you a man in your life? No, I don't. Oh, right. No. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm happy enough to be. I'm too busy, to be honest with you. I'm happy enough for now. Amanda, I'm not being bad here, right? My, my, my wife <clears throat> has gone away on weekends and yeah. I don't mind the kids at home. Even mm-hmm. my stepdaughter. My da- me and my daughter, I call her my daughter. It's the reason why I'm saying stepdaughter is just for the, the argument of this conversation. I class her as my daughter, even though she's not my blood. But like, I yeah. brought her up and she's been with me more than she's been with her father. Like, I have her five days a week in my house. So you're mm-hmm. trying to tell me that if, if I was in with you and your daughter was in my life five days a week, I couldn't discipline that child if you were in work and she was at home with me. I'd have to wait every time until you came home. Are you off your rocker? Do me a favour. Okay, do me a favour. Okay, yeah, I'm completely off my rocker. <laughs> but I'm a mother at the end of the day. Okay, do me a favour, both of you. Hang on, sorry, I have to cut across both of you. I have to take a very quick break, but I'll come straight back to you. This is a difficult one. This is one that is an issue I know in loads of relationships or split relationships. Is it okay for his or her new partner to discipline your child? Now, I'm not talking about after two weeks. Uh, this is a couple that are engaged to be married, so she's going to be around for the foreseeable. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. We're back in just a sec. Ninety eight FM Dublin Talks with Des Kelly Interiors. New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala. Ninety eight FM. I just know room. I have no room left on the show. So, unfortunately, uh, I don't have time for the quiz this week. I'm sorry, because this is after exploding here, this conversation. We're in the middle of a conversation all to do with a message that we got from um, a lady called O. That's how she describes herself. Um, I'm fuming writing this. I have a six-year-old daughter with my ex and we broke up ages ago. He's with someone else for the last two years and engaged. And she seems nice enough, though, uh, even though I've only met her a few times. Yesterday, I found something that has my head spinning. Uh, My daughter was over in her dad's house yesterday. And when she came home, she told me, Daddy's girlfriend put me on the naughty step yesterday because I was bold. I was like, what the hell? She has no right to discipline my daughter. She was being bold, fair enough, but it's not her place to put my little girl on the naughty step. I was about to go over to the house and lift her out of it, but my sister calmed me down. If I don't put a stop to this and tell this one that she's no right to discipline my little girl, it'll happen again. Uh, Have any of your listeners been in this situation before? And, uh, well, we have had some in this situation before. I want to go back to Amanda for a second. Amanda, are you there? Yeah, go ahead. Let me read this message that came in to us. And it says, That lady is ridiculous. That's you, by the way. Uh, A child knows who their mother and father is uh, if both parents are in their lives. It sounds to me that she's just bitter and afraid the child will consider the other woman as her mother. Absolutely ridiculous. What do you say to that? Well, everybody has a right to their own opinion, and I have my way of raising my daughters, so each and every one of us has our own way of raising our daughters or sons. But look, at the end of the day, Adrian, it all depends on the age of the child, you know, how long this person has been in the relationship with either the father or the mother. Okay, but in this case, Um, the... The the, the situation that I was in, okay, um, my ex-husband's wife now was in a supportive role to my ex-husband with regards to my daughter. My daughter was um, visiting her father at the weekends, all right? But never, and would never, stay over. She was supposed to stay over on Friday and a Saturday night, but would never stay over. Now, if my ex-husband was staying in his mother's house, then she'd stay over, no problem. She had no problem with that. Sorry, say, that, say, age, say that again. She wouldn't stay in... Daddy's house. In her dad's house, yes. If Daddy with wasn't daddy there. And his wife. With Daddy and his wife. Really? Yeah. Why? But if Daddy um, was staying in Nana's house, she would stay over no problem. And was that by her choice? Yes, that was by her From own what choice. sort of age? From the age of from about five. So she would stay in Granny's house? Yeah, no problem whatsoever. With she Daddy? But yeah. wouldn't stay with Daddy in his own house? In his own house, if if his wife was there, yeah. Now, Adrian, 
people can call me bitter and twisted if they want. I, don't, I really don't care. Well, you see, uh, uh, well, you see I, well, for, for, first, thing, firstly, I have to tell you they are. But secondly, how would she um, uh, have even known not to like this woman? Because it appears that she doesn't like this woman. Well, if you go on a sleepover, Adrian, at, at just, just coming up to the age of five, and you come home with... Okay, sorry, I can't let you make allegations again against people that I have uh, not got on the phone line and aren't here to uh, defend themselves. So, uh, where am I going now? I am going to... uh, Line one is Sinead. You're on 98FM. Hiya, Sinead. Hi, Adrian. How are you? Why are you bullying? Oh, I'm just really annoyed listening to the conversation. I mean, snowflake generation again. Like, I'm two stepsons now. I mean, I'm much older now, you know, 23 and 26. I don't know if the dad's maybe got terrible 12 or 13 years of my own two children as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we live together, now, if, don't get me wrong, it's my house that everybody's living in, do you know what I mean? But you have to be able to open your mouth. You have to be able to live in your own house comfortably. And if the children are to be welcomed in, which they always were, I've always treated them well, I've treated them like my own. You have to be able to open your mouth and say something. I mean, their mum never had an issue. My house was my rules, and the same went when they were in her home. You know, I, I just... Oh, it's driving me mad listening to people. And the only problem, I think, that the women are having at the moment is that the partners have moved on. And to somebody else. Okay, I, I, I know uh, somebody like Amanda, because she was making allegations there that some of which didn't go out on the air, um, and I'd, I'd love to get into it, but I can't get into it for legal reasons, okay? But she was Absolutely. making certain allegations there, um, and that might add to her feeling that way, uh, some of the allegations that she's been making. But the yeah. point is... Um, <sighs> If the child doesn't like the person, that's a problem. But I often feel if a child doesn't like somebody, it's because their brain has been washed, basically. By absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I agree with you totally, Adrian. Mm. Absolutely. So you know? is it okay, in answer to the question that was put to us by this lady, oh, uh, daddy's girlfriend, but it's actually her fiance, his fiance, um, put her on the naughty step because she was bold. Is that okay to do? When you, I mean, it's not like she's only gone out with her a couple of weeks. She's maybe like she's practically married to him. They're living together. Yes. I mean, she's welcoming the daughter into the home, and I would assume she's treating her like her own. Yeah, I think it's okay. Now, maybe the mum doesn't agree with the naughty step. Maybe she has a different way of dealing with it. If it's take the iPod away or the iPad or whatever the story is. Maybe they could come to an agreement between the mums of what is kind of acceptable as a discipline. You know, that, like, there is some women who feel that she set isn't a nice way of going about it. But I certainly wouldn't be leaving it to the daddy. But like I said, it's not its not like this woman leathered the legs off her or, or no, anything No, absolutely. Of the I don't think there's anything wrong with an she set personally. Mm. You know... I mean, that's what I've done with my children now that they're getting that little bit older. It doesn't work as well, do you know what I mean? So it's iPods or iPads away for a certain amount of time or whatever the story is. But you have to be able to open your mouth. Okay. And I mean, we still have the 23-year-old lizards up here for jobs reasons and that type of thing. Mm. And I mean, if he leaves the shoes on the floor or he leaves the dish in the sink, I decide here. All right, stay there for one second, Sinead. Uh, Let me read this message, and it says, uh, Hang on a minute. If you're under someone else's roof, you go by their rules. Respect is respect, and children need to learn. Any adult should guide children in their lives, so that woman there, and this is uh, Amanda again, um, if it was people who foster kids, can they discipline uh, children because they aren't their real parents? Uh, which is a fair point. It's actually something we were talking about this earlier on. It's something I brought up in the office. Um, I know people who foster children, who take them in. Uh, it can be for a long weekend. It can be for a month. Are they expected not to give out to the child or discipline the child because it's not their child? Amanda, what would you say to that? What would I say to that? Foster yeah. parents. Uh, foster parents, all foster parents have training. 
as to how to deal with children from coming from different situations. Some of the kids from foster home in foster homes are really good kids, never cause a problem. Mm-hmm. Others are coming from their very difficult backgrounds and very, very difficult situations, Adrian. So that's why foster parents are given training. They're given the knowledge and the understanding of how to help. Okay, what about, what about school teachers? Adrian, look, at the end of the day, you're not even giving me a chance to say what I need to say. To okay, you. but I can't let you make allegations against somebody who's I'm not, not making, on the... I'm, well, I'm you not were. making... You were. I'm not you making were. An, no, Adrian, hold on a minute. I didn't make an allegation. I made an observation. And in turn, what did I do about the observation? I went to the professionals and I got the help that I needed to look after my daughter. Right, okay. You never, but it gave, does, me a chance, you never gave me a chance. Okay, to but it does sound in. like there's a bit of animosity and a bit of bitterness here. Listen, I have absolutely no animosity to my ex-husband or his wife. I speak to my ex-husband on a regular basis. None whatsoever. I wish them all happiness in the world. Now, Adrian, at the end of the day, when my, my ex-husband got married and the whole lot... His wife was invited to my daughter's communion, her children. I paid for everything because it was the children that were the important. She has her own children to look after as well. But, you know, you're painting me in the completely the wrong light or maybe I put myself... Yeah, no, I think you kind of did that. Okay, you kind, you kind of did that. Okay, but stay there for a second. Um, uh, and um, Amanda, Catherine, you're on Dublin's 98 FM. How are you, Catherine? Hi there, how are you? Good, thanks, Catherine. What did you want to say on this? Um, well, I just think that whole thing about disciplining foster t- kids just put me over the edge now. I'm a single parent. My son has been around his stepmother since he was about two and a half, three years of age. I may not have liked the thought that she was disciplining him, but he wasn't under my roof. It was their rules. And as a result, he is a very mature kid now, 18 years of age, she gets on well with both his father and his stepmom and me, and then her whole thing about foster parents, and that she just lost me on that one, because I'm well, no, like, I know that wasn't her, that wasn't Amanda who said that, that was a WhatsApp message you said that, but no, it's taken the argument to the nth degree that it's not, you know, if you're fostering kids, they're not your kids, um, and that's the point, uh, one of Amanda's points was... It is up to the actual parents to do the disciplining. And that just clearly doesn't work in foster situations. No, because it doesn't. No. Um, Absolutely not. I mean, I know, I have friends who foster kids and some of the parents, you know, one of the parents is, is incarcerated. You know, they yes, or, or, or incapable or whatever the case yeah. may be. Yeah, of course. But All right, and let me just um, uh, bring in... One last call. Did I uh, speak to Angela? Yes, no, I didn't go to Angela in Kildare. You're on 98 FM, Angela. How are you? Hi, Adrian. How are you? V- very good. <laughs> uh, very quickly, what's your point, Angela? Well, I, I think in this situation, once everyone is on the same wavelength, then there's no problem. Grandparents discipline their grandchildren. I know, but, uh, but clearly in the situation of this lady, oh, she's not on the same page. And uh, listening to the way she wrote her message, I don't ever see a situation where she's happy with this other woman uh, disciplining her child. Well, it's just pure jealousy as far as I'm concerned, Adrian. Because anyone who has a problem with a, a figure that is going to be in their child's life for the foreseeable future or the rest of their lives, you have to do this for the child. You have to, you know, let that child know that this is daddy's new wife. It's it's not your mommy, it's a stepmommy, but she is also going to be in your life. I mean, that one Amanda's off her rocker, saying that it's only parents that can... OK, you know Amanda, I mean? I'm, I'm going to let discipline. you... In case you think you were wronged, uh, I'll let you have the final say on this. What's Go on. Well, uh, the you're, final say. Well, okay, the, the, sorry. Look, at the end of the day, you're, 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 sorry, you're, you're my, off your rocker daughter, is the most common comment that has come in to us. Yeah, well, I probably have a certificate for that one, so that's <laughs> <not for me. laughs> Look, at the end of the day, Adrian, okay, the way my individual situation and each individual situation is completely different has turned out. My daughter is now 14 years old. She's a nice student, okay? She's polite, she's mannerly. She spends a lot of her time with both of her grandparents. She's the type of kid that will get up off the seat at a bu- in a bus to let somebody else sit down. She loves her father to bits. 
spends the weekends with them during the daytime. Mm-hmm. She's a mountain climber. She's climbed all the mountains in okay. Ireland. Uh, uh, she has a for. And let me ask you. Let me made, let me ask you. Finally. No, Adrian, hold on. No, no, I have to. Just, she um, has made the decision not to have a relationship with my ex-husband's uh, wife. Okay. Let me, ask you, fi- let me, let me ask you. Let me ask you. Finally, let me ask you. Finally, Amanda. Um, why? How do you think your ex-husband will feel about you being on the radio today? Is this going to cause more trouble? Uh, to be quite honest with you, knowing his intelligence, I don't think he'd really care. It wouldn't bother him. Okay, fair enough. All right, Amanda, thanks very much indeed for your call and thank you, uh, all of you, for your calls. I... I don't uh, know if that's going to be the case. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Apologies about the quiz this week. We were literally snowed under with uh, with calls. Next week on the programme, I have loads of vouchers to give away for uh, Des Kelly Interiors. Okay, And we have other stuff, always oh, Valentine's stuff going on next week. In fact, it's going to be a mental week next week. Make sure you're here Monday morning, 10am. Have a great weekend. Barry Dunn is next. And in the next hour, he's great music lined up like these. Talks. With Des Kelly Interiors. New store now open at Belgard Road, Tala. 98 FM.